Hey, good afternoon, y'all. Uh, welcome to the Name and Gender Marker Changes in Illinois webinar. My name is Yasmin Doken. I also go by Yazi, uh, she, her pronouns, and I'm the Assistant Director at the Gender and Sexuality Center. This is a collaborative presentation with Student Legal Services, and we appreciate them for collaborate, like, for the collaboration. And this presentation is about how to change your name and gender markers in the state of Illinois. Uh, we'll, uh, Sarah will be talking about the process and how that, how does that, what does the process entail within the state of Illinois? And I'll be also talking about my own personal experiences of changing my uh, name and gender marker in the state of Illinois as well. So I'll pass it along to Sarah. Thank you. Um, so my name is Sarah Baum. I'm the director of student legal services. Um, I am an attorney who is licensed in Illinois. We also have on the call today, Sarah Hennan, who is our law student extern from UIC Law. So she's here, the two of us, um, as well as one other attorney in our office, Lindsay Ditto, are available to help students with their legal issues. Um, and first I'm gonna just go over what we're gonna cover today. I'll, I'll spend a little time just telling you more about student legal services and what we can offer. Um, then we'll talk about what today's objective is. And then we'll go into the process of how to change your name and how to update your documents. Um, and then I'll close with some takeaways, some resources, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Um, okay. I also wanted to share that we will be sending out this presentation as well as the slides to everyone who registered. So um, there's some links in here and things like that. So we'll send that to you so you'll have all this information to guide you through the process. So first, about student legal services. So our office helps current uh, UIC students with their legal issues. And we can do advice, limited scope representation and referrals. So we don't take cases for full representation, um, but when students need um, someone to represent them in their case, we can give them referrals or we can help guide them through the process themselves. Our services are paid for with student fees, so there's no additional cost for our services. And our services are confidential, so students can come to us and we won't share information that you disclose to us with anyone else without your permission. We're available to advise on almost any legal issue um, we see a lot of housing, um, immigration, consumer and debt, um, but we're also available to help with name and gender marker changes. So for today, we're gonna be really talking about um, what we call information and education. So um, we're gonna guide you on how to legally change your name in Illinois and familiarize you with the process and direct you to resources. Uh, we're going to explain how to change your name and gender marker on identifying documents. We'll provide some resources. Um, but one thing I wanna tell you is this, this is not a substitute for legal advice. So everyone's situation is different and the laws also vary from state to state. And also the process can vary within Illinois from county to county. So today we're really going to focus on Cook County and specifically Chicago, since that's where most of our students will be. Um, and some of the things I talk about will be applicable across Illinois. But if you need to do a name change in another state, the process will be different. Um, and um, I also wanted to point out, and we'll get into this, but name changes are done in court, whereas gender marker changes are not done through a court process. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So how to change your name. One thing I wanna point out right from the very start is that things have been getting easier. The process has been getting easier over the years. Uh, there was a bill that became effective January 1st of this year called the Name Change Modernization Bill. 
Um, so I'll highlight places where the law has changed in case you've heard things before um, and, and things might be slightly different now. So before we get into the legal process, I just want to talk about some of the reasons you can change your name. Um, you can really change your name for almost any reason. Um, the only thing is the reason cannot be illegal or fraudulent. So like, for instance, if you're just doing it to avoid paying debts, but that's not usually why people are changing their name. You know, people change their name because they get married, they get divorced, they want to use a name that more closely reflects their gender identity. People might just not like their current name or they wanna make a political statement or they're doing it for a religious reason or want to avoid an abuser. So there might be different reasons people wanna change their name. People change their name all the time. So like this is something that judges are used to hearing and um, I shouldn't say all the time, but there's a lot of people changing their name um, in court on a daily basis. So the first question is, do you need to go to court to change their name? And there's really only two situations where you don't. That's if your name is changed by a, a valid marriage certificate. So you got married and you want to change your name. Or if you get divorced and the judgment gives you permission to return the use of your former name. Um, for everyone else, you do have to go to court and get a court order to change your name. Um, and, and that's true if you get divorced and the judgment doesn't give you permission, it has to explicitly say that. So if that wasn't included, you'll have to go to court. So the eligibility for changing your name in Illinois is you have to be at least 18 years old. And you have to have lived in Illinois for at least six months. And if you've ever been convicted of a felony, you have to have completed your sentence or been pardoned. Um, there used to be a 10 year waiting period for people who had felony convictions. And there used to be a lifetime ban on people changing their name if they had an identity theft conviction. But those two restrictions were lifted with the most recent bill. So now you just have to have completed your sentence or been pardoned. Um, there is a process for changing the name of minors, but it's different, and today we're going to focus on adult name changes. One warning is there is um, there's a, an issue for people that are required to register under the Sex Offender Registration Act, the Murder and Violent Offender Against Youth Registration Act, or the Arsonist Registration Act. So these are people that may have uh, felony conviction, they finish their sentence, but they still have to register under one of these registries for a period of time. Um, it's a felony to seek a name change unless you're requesting the name change due to a marriage, your religious beliefs, your status as a victim of trafficking, or your gender-related identity. So there used to be a ban. These, these individuals could not petition to change their name and now it's up to a judge, it's judicial dis discretion to decide whether to grant a name change for one of these reasons. Um, if this does apply to you and you do get a name change, please also be mindful that you have to notify law enforcement that you've changed your name. It's for within three days uh, if you have a sex offense, five days for murder or violence against you, and 10 days for arson. So this is going to apply to a limited number of people, but I wanted to mention that this is still um, a restriction um, that people um, need to be aware of. So the basic steps to getting your name changed in court are, are these. First, you'll prepare your documents. Second, you'll file your documents in court. Third, you have to give notice to the public um, by publishing notice in a newspaper. However, you can ask a judge to waive this requirement. And then you have to attend a court date. And then once you get a court order granting your name change, you have to go about the process of updating your documents. So I'm going to go through each of these steps um, right now. So the first is prepare your required forms. So in Cook County, um, 
they require a cover sheet. It's not required in other counties, but if you are filing in Cook County, I have a link to the cover sheet. Um, and I have some instructions for how to fill it out. Under plaintiff or petitioner, you list your current name and then you put your updated name under defendant respondent. And then there's a box to check that you're asking for a petition to change your name. And then there's a box to check if you're pro se, which is just the Latin term for you're representing yourself. The second form everyone has to fill out is the request for a name change. And this form gives the court the information it needs to decide if you can change your name or not. So it'll ask about those things I talked about before. Are you at least 18? Have you lived in Illinois for at least six months? And do you have any convictions or criminal history? Um, you can now include your spouse in your name change request. So on the form, if your spouse is also trying to change their name, there's room for that um, to be added. It used to be that you had to have a witness sign this and, and certify that you've been using this name, but that is no longer required. The other thing you have to do is fill out a proposed order for a name change. And this form um, is used by the judge to grant or deny your request. Um, so, one thing I want to point out here is that if you were born outside of Illinois, um, you should know that some states require you to include specific information in your um, order for name change in order to update your birth records. For example, some states require that the court order have the date or location of your birth or a certificate index number on your birth certificate. So. If you have, if you're planning to change your birth certificate in another state, you're going to want to make sure to check that state's requirements. And then what you can do is add any requirements into the proposed order. There's a place to add any additional information you might need to add. And at the end, I'm going to have a link to um, where you can look this information up. Um, in Cook County, you're also going to need to gather the following documents, your birth certificate, your Illinois state ID, and any past name change orders. Um, these documents, are you don't have to require them everywhere in Illinois. It's not required under the statute, but Cook County wants to see these and to make the process as smooth as possible, you'll wanna gather these and file these in the case as well. If you happen to have a birth certificate that's in another language, you have to provide a certified translation of your birth certificate as well. And I've listed there some alternatives if you don't have these documents. For a birth certificate, you can also use your passport. If you don't have a state ID, they are looking for some proof of residency in Illinois. So I mentioned before that the general rule is that you have to tell the public if you're asking to change your name and you do this by publishing notice of your court date in a newspaper for at least three weeks. You can ask a judge to waive this requirement if one of the following is true. If you have been protected by a restraining order or you are, are at risk of hardship if you have to publish your notice of your request for a name change. Um, so restraining order, that includes if you have now or have or have been protected um, by an order of protection, a stopping no contact order, a civil no contact order, a protective order that was issued in someone else's criminal case, or you've been protected um, under someone else's bail conditions. Um, if that doesn't apply to you, you can still ask for an exception if you are at risk of hardship. And that can include physical harm, discrimination, harassment, bullying, or threats of violence. If you want to ask for a, a waiver of this requirement to publish notice, you have to prepare the following documents. The first is a motion to waive notice and publication. And a motion is just asking the judge to do something, and in this case, you're asking the judge to waive this requirement. 
And then you also have to fill out a proposed order for the judge to sign if, for them to either grant or deny your request. Just a quick note, if you are a victim of domestic violence, stalking, or sexual assault, if you or a, house, you or a household member are at risk of domestic violence, stalking, or sexual assault, you do not have to disclose your address on the court form. So the court forms will have a place for your address. Instead, you can use an alternative address on your court form, which might include um, a PO box, or if you are working with a domestic violence agency, they might allow you to use their address. Um, here, we, we would allow you to use student legal services address. So just know that you don't always have to put down your home address. Other forms that you can fill out or might need to fill out uh, include a fee waiver application. So when you file a case in court, they're, they're always filing fees. Uh, the amount varies by county, but you can expect between $388 to $400. Um, not everyone can afford to pay those types of fees. So if you're low income, and many students are because you're a student, you can apply for a fee waiver. Um, and I've included a link for the fee waiver for civil cases application. Um, the application just asks you about your income, your assets, your expenses. If you're getting public benefits, You'll, you'll qualify for a fee waiver, um, but you can also include um, proof of your income. And if, if you are an individual, you're making $25,000 or dollars less a year, your fee, va fee waiver will usually be granted. And if you apply for a fee waiver, it can be granted in whole or in part. So um, even if you can't get the entire fee waived, you might be able to get part of it waived. So once you prepare all these documents, you're going to want to file your request. So in Illinois, we have mandatory e-filing, which sounds like that would be easier than going to the courthouse, but it's a little bit tricky. So I have included a link to how to successfully e-file. Um, most people in Illinois will use a program called Odyssey e-file Illinois. Um, it's it's um, pretty easy to use when you have instructions, but you have to register, create an account, um, and and then you can find instructions on the at the link there on how to actually go about filing your documents. One thing you need to know is that all your documents must be in PDF format. Um, you may need to compress a PDF if it's too large, um, and also. A tip is that e-filing is a lot easier on a computer. It may not work very well on a cell phone or a tablet. Um, I should also mention that some people qualify for exemptions from e-filing. So if you have a disability that keeps you from e-filing, you're not required to e-file. Um, also, you can apply for an exemption if you don't have internet or computer access in your home and it's hard for you to travel if you have trouble reading, writing, or speaking English, if you're filing documents in a sensitive case, such as an order of protection, or if you tried to e-file your forms, but you're not able to because of your, you don't have the equipment or you don't have the help necessary. But for most people, especially if you're a student, I think you'll be able to e-file, but just know that if it's really hard, you can't do it, you can't apply for an exception. So once you have all your documents prepared, and in PDF format, you need to file in the circuit clerk's office in the county where you live. And you'll need to file um, in Cook County, you'll do that cover sheet, the request for your name change and the proposed order as one document. If you're filing to waive notice and publication, include that in the proposed order in one document and file that. And then you'll also file that fee waiver application in the proposed order. And then once you file everything, you're gonna wait for a response. So the clerk of court will either accept or reject your filing. You should get an email notification or you can check your Odyssey account under the filed tab to see if, if your case has been filed. Don't worry if your filing has been rejected, you can correct any errors and refile. So don't, 
freak out that you might screw this up because you can fix mistakes. If the clerk accepts your filing, the documents will be stamped and a case number will be assigned. And then you should receive an email with your court date, time. In, in Chicago, they're hearing cases on Zoom, so you should get your Zoom room information and the name of the judge. If you file this and you haven't heard back about your request in a week, you can email the circuit court at this email address um, to ask for an update. And you should find out whether your fee, fee waiver application is approved in one to two weeks. It is possible that the judge reviewing your fee waiver application may need more information or want to have a hearing on your application to have the fee waived. But the judge will notify you if you need to provide more information or go to court. And then after the judge decides, they'll fill out the court order, which will say whether you have to pay the fees or not. Um, if the judge decides that you have to pay all or some of the fees, they'll set a deadline. And it's very important to pay that because if you don't, your case can be dismissed or the judge can actually find against you. Once your uh, case is accepted in Cook County, you can file those remaining documents I talked about, the original birth certificate or passport, your original state ID or current proof of residency and any past name change orders. These also must be saved in a PDF file and they have to be in portrait orientation. Um, and you can file them all in one document uh, as long as it's a PDF. So if you filed that motion to waive your notice and publication, then the next step is to go to court. So you'll go to court on that court date. There's not, there's, there used to be, but there's no longer a separate court date to decide that motion to waive notice and publication. Um, instead, the judge will decide whether to grant your motion to waive publication at that court date, and then they'll just also decide your request for a name change at the same time. And if the judge grants your request to waive the notice, um, they'll go ahead and, and decide whether to grant your request. But if they don't decide, then you'll have to publish notice in the newspaper and then your court date will be moved to a new court date to give you time to do that. Um, I also wanna mention that um, it's probably worth filing a motion to waive notice and publication um, if you think that you um, might be subject to harm because um, there's a good chance that a judge will grant it. You do have to sort of tell the judge about your unique situation, um, why you think you're at risk of harm or discrimination if you publish your name change request. Um, and then again, you can inform the judge if you have been protected under a restraining order before. Um, if, if at this court date you have to disclose sensitive information, you can also ask to be heard last. Um, but you do need to explain a little bit about why you can't publish um, and your individual circumstances. But these do get granted. So, and if it's not granted, the worst that happens is you have to come back to court after publishing it. So if you didn't file a motion to waive notice and publication or the judge denied your motion, then you must publish your name, name change in a newspaper. And there's a form to do that. It's called the publication notice of court date for request for name change. And it's just a, a one or two page form where you put down the court date and the time and the location. And then you have to give it to a newspaper. Um, and, and the newspaper will take it from there. But it does have to be published in the county where you live. You must publish the notice once a week for three consecutive weeks. And the notice must appear in a newspaper for the first time at least six weeks before your court date. And the newspapers may charge a publication fee. Um, if you were granted a fee waiver and you can't afford 
the publication fee, you can go back to court and file a motion asking a judge to order the county to pay the cost of publication, or you can just pay it yourself. These are two common places that people publish the notice. And, and again, they do, they publish these notices all the time. So the newspapers actually know what's required and, and will take care of a lot of it for you. You just have to get them that notice. Um, so the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin is one. Um, and that, um, I have the links there where you can submit your request to have your name changed published. Um, the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin actually does um, waive the fees if you have a fee waiver application. Um, otherwise, it costs around $150 to $200. Um, the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin is, is a newspaper that's mainly read by attorneys, but so I think people get like sort of freaked out, like I'm going to put this in the newspaper and everyone's going to know and be in my business. But the reality is that not many people are like reading the notices in the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin. So it's it's the most likely scenario is you if you have to publish, no one's actually ever gonna read it. Um, the Daily Herald also um, publishes these and they charge um, a pretty reasonable fee of around $90. I actually didn't update that. Um, Right. I didn't look to see if that's still the fee, but that's what it was a year ago. So hopefully it's the same. But I think that's generally less expensive than some other newspapers charge. So those are the two that I would recommend for people in Chicago or in Cook County. So once that once the notice has been published, then you'll get a certificate of publication, which is just proof that you publish notice. The newspaper will either send it directly to the circuit court or mail it to you or tell you you can pick it up. But you need to make sure that it's filed in your court case before your court date so the judge can see that you fulfilled this requirement of publishing notice. And just so you know, I think historically this has been required, again, because there's this idea that people are trying to avoid their creditors or um, you know, somehow get around the law. So the purpose of the notice is to let people know in case, um, you know, there's some good reason they shouldn't have their name change or if they're trying to evade some kind of process. But again, most of the time people are changing their name for personal reasons that have nothing to do with anyone else. So that's why I think judges are more likely than they used to to grant the waiver of the publication requirement. Okay, so the next thing is attend your court date. Um, we talked a little bit about this before because you might just have one court date, but if you have to come back, um, again, I mentioned this, they're currently taking place on Zoom in Cook County. Um, you'll want to have ev copies of everything you filed available and handy. Um, if you, for some reason, weren't able to file those copies of your birth certificate and ID, the judge may want to see them, so you'll want to have those handy in case you need to hold them up to the camera. Um, other documents you might want to have available include a judgment for dissolution of marriage, if that's the reason that you're changing your name is because you got divorced. Um, if you're asking for a waiver of the requirement that you publish notice, you'll wanna have copies of any um, protection orders um, or any other documents that might show that you might suffer harm if you have to publish your name change. Um, if you have any criminal uh, history, arrests or convictions, you may wanna have papers related to those, um, especially if you, been convicted of a felony and you've completed your sentence, you'll want to be able to show that you've completed your sentence. And if you have any witnesses, um, if you want the judge to hear from other people, those people also have to come to court and be witnesses. That might come up if um, you're asking to waive the publication requirement and someone can attest that you would face discrimination, or harassment, or bullying if you published your name change. 
but what does expect once you're there? You may be placed under oath and the judge um, will ask you some questions. You'll wanna listen to those questions and answer them truthfully. And the judge is really trying to understand why you wanna make this change. And they might wanna know how long you've been using your new name. Um, you're allowed to have notes um, if you need to remember any important dates, like when you started using a new name or anything like that. The hearing will last around 15 minutes. Um, and then the judge will either grant or deny your request for a name change, and they'll write their decision on the court order that you filed. Um, and I did want to mention that um, the Transformative Justice Law Project, also known as TJLP, has, has done some work educating judges in Cook County about the reasons people want to change their name. And judges are used to hearing from people who are changing their name to match their gender identity. So, um, so hopefully it's, it, it's a smooth process. It's going to depend on the judge, but um, you're probably not going to be the first person asking for a name change. And the judge should be able to, um, to run the hearing smoothly. And, um, and we'll talk to, to Yas, Yasmin a little later about her experience with this. So this is just a little picture about the old realities you'd have to show up to court. You might still have to show up to court in some jurisdictions, but now most court hearings are hand happening uh, remotely on Zoom. Um, one benefit to that is it's more accessible, um, but you still need to remember it's an official proceeding. So you wanna find a quiet place where you can concentrate and listen. Um, so make sure that you still prepare for your hearing, even though it seems less formal being on Zoom. It's still a court process and you want to be able to speak to the judge and have your case heard without any disruptions. So if your request is granted, then the next thing you're going to need to do is get certified copies. And these are just official copies that the clerk stamps. And the reason you need these is that you'll need to submit those when changing your name on other records. Um, in Chicago, you can go to the Richard J. Daly Center at 50 West Washington, 1202. You can bring your own copies or ask them to print them. Um, there is a fee for this. Um, the fee will be waived if you were granted a fee waiver. The number of copies you'll need depends on how many documents are going to be changing. You'll want to get at least three certified copies, but I've also seen it recommended that you take eight copies and just get as many as you can so that you have them and don't have to go back. So once you have those certified court or court uh, orders, then you can go about the process of updating the records. So nothing changes automatically. You have to bring the court order to change your name on various documents. Uh, one nice thing is that in Illinois, in Illinois um, you no longer need medical documentation to support your change in gender identification, so it's become much easier to change your gender marker, and I'll, I'll go through each document and what you'll need. So the big four documents that you'll be able to update are your Illinois driver's license or state ID, your Illinois birth certificate, your social security card, and your passport. So the first two are obviously state documents and the second two are federal documents. So again, you might need to go to another state to change your birth certificate. Um, or if you have a driver's license or state ID in another state, you'll have to look up that state's process for getting those changed. And then I'll talk about some other documents that you might consider updating. Um, also, just a note for Illinois, um, if you're changing your gender marker, you don't also need a name change order. And the same is true on federal documents. But some states require that you have a name change or gender marker change in a court order. Um, Illinois does not change gender markers pursuant to a court order. There's just no process or statute allowing courts to change your gender marker in a court order. So if you live in a state where they require a court order to change your gender marker, 
then you're you're going to probably need to file your petition to change your name in that state. So with regard to an Illinois driver's license or state ID, I included the link for the Illinois Secretary of State. They have information on their website for how to go about this process. Uh, you basically have to visit a Secretary of State facility or the DMV to turn in your incorrect license. Um, and then you have to provide acceptable identification for proof of identity. If you already have an ID or license, um, that's usually enough. If your address has changed, you'll also need to bring proof of your residency. You'll also need to bring them the certified copy of your name change order if you're changing your name. Um, if you're requesting a gender marker change, there's a form you need to fill out, the gender designation change form. And your options there for gender are M, F, and X. And there is a, a small fee. Um, $5 if you're correcting a license and $10 to correct a state ID. And it's also recommended that you update this document first. If you're updating an Illinois birth certificate, you can find information about that on the Illinois Department of Public Health Bureau of Vital Records website, and I have a link there to that. Um, the first step you'll need to take is to prepare your documents. They have an affidavit and correction of certificate request form. Um, you have to fill that out, wait to sign it until you're in front of a notary, they'll watch you sign it. And then you'll take that and send, you have to send in a check or money order for $15 made out to the Illinois Department of Public Health, along with a photocopy of your ID, if you're changing your name, include that certified copy of your name change order. And then you can change your gender marker to M, F, or X if you need to change that. And then you'll mail that to the Division of Vital Records at the address listed there on the, on the slide. Social Security card. So for this, you need to go to the Social Security Administration and the cost for changing your social security card is it's free there's no cost um their options right now for gender markers are just m or f although they are updating it to offer x as an option but that's not currently available and what you have to do is fill out an application for a social security card bring it to your local office take your unexpired identification and a copy of your name change order, and you can get a new social security card. For your passport, that's handled by the U.S. Department of State. Um, the cost depends on, um, and the forms you need depends on whether you're already, uh, whether you already have a valid passport or if you're applying for a new passport. Um, but what you'll need to provide include uh, includes a proof of U.S. citizenship, your proof of identity, a recent color photograph, two by two inches, and your certified name change order. And you can take those documents to a passport acceptance facility. Um, and the options they have for gender markers are MF and X. Um, but you can go to the U.S. Department of State website to get, they have more detailed information on each situation, depending on whether you are changing a passport or getting this one. Other documents you might consider updating include your voter registration, naturalization forms, bank account, and COVID vaccination cards. And I'll, um, I'll direct you to where you can find more information about those. So, just some takeaways, things to remember. You can do this without a lawyer. Um, the forms are designed to be filled out by people without lawyers. Um, and there are a lot of guides out there. Um, however, you may want to consult with a lawyer if you have any criminal convictions or pending criminal charges, or you are not a US citizen. You also have to remember to file where you have your current proof of residency, so in the county where you live. 
you can fix filing mistakes. So it's not the end of the world if, if you make a mistake when you're preparing your documents. It can take several months. Like from the time you file to when you get a name change order it can take two to four months, but then there's also, you have to add on time it takes to actually change your documents. So it can be a lengthy process. So make sure, you know, to get started as soon as possible. If this is um, something you're hoping to do quickly, um, just be prepared that it can take some time. And then the cost can be up to $600. Circuit court filing fees is the biggest cost, but you can apply to have that waived. There may be a cost to publish it in the newspaper, but that may also be waived. Certified copying fees between six to $10 unless that's been waived. And then the cost of updating your ID and other documents, you have to add those in as well. There are a lot of resources out there, which is great. Um, the, one, the first one I want to mention is that the state of Illinois has created standardized court forms. Um, they have court forms for name change and for fee waivers, and they have included instructions and blank forms that make it really easy to understand and fill out. Um, these forms are, are for use throughout Illinois. They're not specific to Cook County. Every court in Illinois has to take these um, forms. So that's one option is to go on, fill out those forms and follow the instructions. There are also two different guided interview name for name changes that you can use. The first is Illinois Legal Aid Online. They have a guided interview. It's kind of like TurboTax or something like that, where they ask you a series of questions and then the program will complete the forms for you and it's free to use. And then you'll have those forms to file. And then Odyssey, the e-filing, um, the e-filing resources resource I told you about also has a guided interview that's similar, um, and they'll also help you complete the forms and help you e-file, and it's also free to use. There are also two different resources for extra help. This is not legal advice, but there are people who can assist you with e-filing or if you have questions about your court appearance or filling out the form. The first is Illinois Justice Corps. They have a helpline. And the second is Illinois Court Help. They also have a, a hotline um, and you can find information on their website as well. I included the links to several guides for updating your identity documents. One is from Equality Illinois. Um, another one is from TJLP. Um, they have a really nice comprehensive guide to identity documents. Illinois Legal Aid Online has some information. And then the National Center for Transgender Equality has an ID document center. And that's the place where you can go to look up information uh, in, in every state. They've compiled information from every state about how to change your name and gender marker on various documents. Um, one thing I did note when I was preparing this presentation is that a lot of these resources haven't been updated to reflect the name change modernization bill. I expect that will happen with time, but you want to also want to make sure that um, this might be a good place to start, but you may also want to look at um, each, if you're, if you're getting a birth certificate in another state, go to their Department of Vital Records to see what the website says is required. I have some additional legal referrals. Um, Transformative Justice Law Project will walk people through the process. Um, they're currently prioritizing people who have not been able to get a name change due to a criminal conviction. Um, and at times I know they've had a wait list um, but they assist people with this process. Legal Counsel for Health Justice and Chicago House also take these cases. They do have income guidelines, so they take cases for people who are low income. And then of course, if you're a UIC student, you can come to Student Legal Services. You can come to our office. Um, you can fill out an intake form on our website, which is sls.uic.edu. We're located in the Student Services Building. Um, and you can email us and we're available to help answer any further questions that you might have. So I want to leave um, 
some time to to talk to to Yasmin about her experience. Um, so yeah, if you'd like like to share kind of what that was like for you or where you had challenges, that would be awesome. Totally awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for this great presentation. And yeah, like, so in terms of my experience, so I changed my name, legally changed my name and gender marker last year around this time from between late January, early February, up until my court, virtual court date, which was July 28th, I believe. And yeah, it was very smooth. I was luckily able to get in contact with TJLP and connect with one of the caseworkers there. And they helped me, they helped guide the process for me because I'm not the best with legal documents. And so I, um, they were really helpful in that. And yeah, uh, yeah. And so I was able to go to one of their info sessions and through the info session, we got that paperwork sorted and yeah. And like one of the challenges, I, one of the challenges was through the process was just the wait time. It was, uh, it took me about a little over five months to like get a court date, but that's just there's always like, there's just a wait list for that. And so definitely echoing what Sarah said in terms of if you are wanting to change your name, change your name and gender marker on your legal documents as soon as possible, I would suggest like trying to get that process going uh, as soon as you can. And yeah, and then, yeah, but other than that, it was pretty much smooth sailing like I my court date my virtual court date was about four minutes um it was yeah like um they just asked me a few questions about the name change and then the judge granted it and I know that that's not necessarily with everyone's experience but uh TJLP kind of like uh reassured that a lot of the judges in Cook County have been educated on uh, topics of name change. So they're, they're pretty familiar with people wanting to get their name changes for whatever reason, and particularly around gender identity. And so, yeah, and then someone helped me go after the court date to go to uh, go get my social security card and uh, driver's license. And so they also offer that as well. And so, yeah, no, so it was really, it was a good experience overall. And they, um, TJLP helped guide the process. And so overall, my name change experience has been pretty smooth in Illinois. I would say like the only, the biggest challenge is just um, the wait time. And that's just inevitable. What That's just part of navigating um, state bureaucracy. But yeah, that's been my experience. And so, yeah, and I definitely recommend if you're going to start the process to, if you want, like if definitely if you're a UI student to rely on student, to use you, student legal services as a resource as well. And so, yeah, and that's so far been my, that's been my experience changing my name and gender marker in Illinois. Thank you so much for sharing. Um... I also want to leave some time for Q&A. Um, if you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box and we're happy to answer any questions you might have or at least try to. And a reminder, uh, there's no such thing as a wrong question. Um, this process can be finicky and we're happy to help in whatever way we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even if you just need to clarify something we talked about.
So we have one question um, from Zeke. Is changing surname illegal? I I don't think it is. Yeah. No, again, you can you can change your name. Um again, the judge will want to know why you want to change your name. Um, so you want to be prepared to explain like what your reasons are. Um, but no, it's it's not illegal. And yeah, that's when people get married and divorced, that's usually what they're changing. Any other questions? Um, I'm not seeing any other questions, but if you think of any, please feel free to reach out um, to myself or to Yasmin. Um, we're happy to provide you some one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, legal advice here at Student Legal Services. Um, and I'm just, I'm not sure if you all can read the chat, but you can reach us at studentlegalservices at uic.edu or I'm at sbaum at uic.edu, or fill out an intake form. But I really appreciate everyone who attended. I hope this was helpful. Thank you again, Yasmin, for sharing your experience. I think it's really helpful to hear from someone who's gone through it instead of someone who's just read about it and, and walk people through it. It's, it's sort of a personal experience. So, um, all right, I will put my email in the chat. Um, for anyone who needs it. I will put my email in the chat as well. All right. Great. Awesome. I'll give a few minutes for anyone to pull that, but, um, but again, um, thank you. And I think we can go ahead and end the recording, um, but have a great day, everyone. If you're watching the Eclipse, have fun. And um, thanks again. Yes, thanks y'all. And be sure to, uh, the GSC, the both the Community Lounge and Flex Space is open from 11 to 4 p.m. on Monday through Thursday. So, and staff are available virtually on Friday. So please feel free to stop by if you have any questions or just want to check out the space. Thank you.